Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a trying new makeup. I just want to do something chill, kind of like a natural glam look. And I have some new products I wanted to share. So I have the new ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Creamy Concealers that I want to demo, as well as I want to try this out. This is the 4th Ray Beauty Soak It Up Hyaluronic Mask. I'm going to use this just as a moisturizer because it says that you can. I also want to use the Going Coconuts Collection from ColourPop, really focusing on the palette because you guys requested this and one of their bronzers. So I want to use both of those. I also have the Natasha Denona Foundation X Plus. I haven't used this on camera. This has been out for a little bit, but I didn't have any other like new foundations. I also have some blushes from Patrick Ta that I thought we could play with. I have the new glazed lit kit from Laura Lee Los Angeles. I've been hearing these are really great. I have some lip products like the lip glosses from Lawless as well as from Laura Lee. And then I have a Givenchy mascara. So I just have a big mix of stuff so I thought we'd play around. If you're new here, I would love for you to subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you hit the bell. I know everybody says that, but truly, if you want to be notified, definitely want to do that and let's go ahead and jump in. I zoomed you guys in. I want to tell you a little story as to why I haven't filmed a trying new makeup recently I bought this uh, after watching Kathleen Light's favorites and I don't know why I didn't think about it but Dior is heavily fragranced I've never really tried their skincare so I picked up the plump filler serum and when I tell you this is literally like a bouquet of flowers times 10 if you are sensitive to scents this is an absolute no I literally when I put it on it was so irritating my skin was itching and I just, it was awful, let's say that. And then the following four days, I felt like my skin was chapped, red, itchy, blotchy. I started breaking out. So this is an absolute no. I need to stop. Just like somebody else is like, I love this. I need to get a sample or something like that. Uh, especially fragranced. I, I don't know why I didn't think about it because I know Dior is really heavily fragranced. I just wasn't expecting that because I do have some skincare that has a little bit of fragrance, but this is like another level. So that just like threw my skin off. I didn't wear makeup for like four days because my skin was so irritated. I still have like some scarring down here from breakouts. Never again, okay? So that's going to be a no. And I'm usually like, I, th I would say I'm sensitive, but I don't get like crazy reactions typically. And that gave me a reaction and I, it has to be the fragrance because it was so strong. So I want to go in with this 4th Ray Beauty Soak It Up Hydrating Hyaluronic Acid Mask. This is very similar to the Summer Fridays Jet Lag Mask, which I do love. So you can apply this, let it sit on for 10 minutes, and then kind of wipe it off. You could leave it on, you could rub it in. It's just a really hydrating mask, but they also say you can use it as a moisturizer, which is what we're going to do today. feels very kind of lightweight, almost... I don't know. I'm, it kind of reminds me of the Tachi Dewey... Tachi Dewey, Tatcha Dewey skin cream in the texture of it, in the color really as well, but the texture of it, it's very like, what's the word? Slick. Feels really nice on the skin actually. I'm wondering if this is going to be like a dupe. That feels really similar to that. See like this has a light fragrance to it, but it's very light. Even though I wish the fragrance would calm down just in general all over, especially in skincare. The fragrance sometimes is just out of control. And I know it like when you put on a watermelon mask or something, it's really, you know, like a sensory experience, but truly, especially the floral fragrance. Why do some of these brands do that? It's just over the top. Yeah, you can even see like my hands have like a do to them. I feel like this is going to be a dupe for the Tatcha. So I am going to apply a little bit of a pore primer. This is the Anna Sue Pore Smoothing Base. This is very similar to the Tarte, but this one is fragranced, which again, it has that like herbal fragrance and I wish they would stop. I don't really find that this irritates me and I actually like the effect, but if you are very sensitive to fragrance, go with the Tarte one. I'm still kind of testing this out to see what I think. So I'm just going to apply this in my T-zone where I get really uh, large pores. For foundation, I don't have anything really new. It's kind of crazy. We had like crazy amount of foundations and then it kind of settled. And now I feel like we're seeing a lot of holiday kits, a lot of lip products, highlighters, palettes. So I'm going to go in with this Natasha Denona uh, Foundation X Plus Full Coverage. Uh, this, I believe she had the Foundation X. This is the X Plus. I don't know if you can hear, but it has like a little kind of ball in there and this does separate so just be wary of that like if you see it and it looks separated just shake it I have the shade 40 N which is 40 neutral light medium beige rose is 
the name. So I'm gonna pump this out. This is supposed to be full coverage. It's very watery, which doesn't really necessarily mean anything to me, but I'm gonna use a sponge. Just kind of like, take it on the sponge. Oh yeah, that's really good coverage. Right off the bat, wow. Uh, that kind of reminds me texture-wise of the, does anybody remember the Marc Jacobs? It had like a little dropper. It was very high coverage, very thin. So this is what the foundation looks like. I feel like the shade's a little bit dark, but we will brighten up with some concealer. It looks nice. It actually looks quite natural. I wouldn't say it's like dewy, but it definitely has kind of like a healthy look to it, but it could also be that uh, Fourth Ray Beauty primer or mask. But it looks good, high coverage. We'll have to see how it lasts. It, I don't notice really that it's smoothing, but it's also not really enhancing. So we'll see how it lasts. I wanna go in next with the Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Creamy Concealer. I think today I'm gonna use, I'm trying to decide if I wanna use 90, no, that's too dark. I think I'm gonna go in with Light 50W and use this to kind of brighten up. So I've used this a couple times. This is supposed to be like hyaluronic acid, really hydrating, and I don't see that. It also says it's full coverage. I would say more of a medium buildable. And I actually have found that I like to use more of this than I typically would. I literally just put that in my eyeball. Good job. So usually I don't use this much, but I found that that works best for me with this because I feel like I don't know, I need more coverage out of this product. I don't know if I would say that this is drying. It's just, it's almost like a whipped formula. It's just whipped, it's not liquidy at all. And I just, I guess I was anticipating like a super hydrating formula and I don't necessarily feel that. It looks nice here. I just think I need more than I typically do with other concealers. And if you're getting this thinking like, oh my gosh, I'm so dry, all my prayers have been answered, I don't know if this is gonna be the most hydrating concealer. It looks pretty good right now though, so I think more is more with this, which usually I would say less is more, but I, I do think more is more with this if you're wanting that full coverage. So I went ahead and did my brows off camera, and we're gonna go in to the Going Coconuts palette from ColourPop. I wore this in my last video, and I mentioned that I had like a crazy experience with my eyeliner, and then I had to kind of stop filming. So I wanted to play with this again because you guys have been requesting it. So here's what the palette looks like. It's definitely a really pretty neutral palette. It doesn't lean warm. It truly is that neutral, right in the middle kind of tone. So I actually saw somebody that I follow, Tina Halada. I think that's how you say it. She did this gorgeous, different type of cut crease, and it was really natural but glam. So I want to try that out today. So I'm going to kind of mimic that. I'll put a picture up on the screen, and I'll like link her Instagram. But she's like really talented with makeup. So I'm hoping that I can even do somewhat something like that. I'm gonna start out with the shade Lovely Bunch. So she started mapping out way above her crease. I feel like I can zoom you in even more. Here we go. So almost right here under the brow bone, almost touching the nose. So this is where it started. And you wanna use a light color. And then with a different brush, I'm gonna kind of just pull this out. So you're gonna go like way above your crease up here. And then I'm also going to do the kind of outer edge. But you really don't want a dark color. You want this to be light. So I was going to tell you guys, I've been watching Peaky Blinders. And we have one episode left. We have been binge watching it. So thank you guys for the recommendation. That is like totally the kind of show that we like. Now I'm just sad that we're up to date. Uh, I, I think we're going to check out, I think it's called Animal Kingdom. People have been saying that one's good. Uh, so I think we're gonna check that out and also Yellowstone. Those are our next on the list But I know like you is coming back, which is that crazy stalker one that's coming back in December Vikings is coming back in December and shameless is back on so That's good, but I'm waiting on like Ozark and Handmaid's Tale. Those are like my favorites I just think Peaky Blinders is like the first few episodes. I was kind of like mm. I just felt like it was a little bit too much kind of action and there wasn't enough like emotional things. I like like the emotional family drama and it's like I get really invested in the characters and I felt like it was a lot of just like business action and then once they got into like the family dynamics I'm really into it. So if you haven't seen Peaky Blinders highly recommend it. Just know that there's like violence and drugs and stuff but the acting and just the production is 
amazing. So now that we have kind of the base to work with, I'm gonna go into the shade Shell Yeah right here. I'm gonna use a Sigma E33. This is a detailed diffuser crease. So the Shell Yeah is a little bit darker and a little bit warmer, and I'm gonna use this to really kind of try to define this. Mostly right here. I don't even know if this is gonna work because she is like crazy talented, Tina. And then I'm also gonna take that same Shell We Dance and just make sure that I'm putting this on the outer edge too. Nala keeps walking back and forth. Fun times here, her little claws on the hardwood. Okay, so now that we have the general shape, I'm gonna go in with the lightest shade called Shredded, and I'm gonna use a dry brush for this. So for this, I'm going to use a flat brush, not wet, just regular, and I'm not going to uh, use concealer, but I'm gonna kinda cut the crease with this eyeshadow. So it should look something similar to this. This might be a good way if you're new to a cut crease. Don't use a concealer, just try it with a really light shadow to begin and kind of map it out. So now I'm gonna do a little wing. I'm gonna use this brown Marc Jacobs liner. I'm just gonna kind of put a lot of it on the back of my hand and then before it dries, I'm gonna use an angled brush to pick it up. I want this to be really soft. Okay, that was a struggle. Every time I try to do a liner without this pen, I struggle. And I don't know what it is. Like, I feel like it still doesn't even look perfect out there. Something about this pen I just love. I almost wish they'd come in different shades. So this is the Artist of Makeup pen. I've talked about this so many times. If you struggle with liner, this is it. So I'm gonna do a really, really thin liner to connect everything that we've done just so it hides the lash band. So it looks like she also did almost like a cat eye effect on the inner corner. I don't know if I can do this in frame because I feel like I have to get so close to the camera, so I'm gonna try to do my best. Okay, so I did the best I could. I messed this side up. There's no way I could do that on camera. I was like this close to the mirror, but I wanna go in with this Givenchy. This is the Disturbia, uh, is this the Volume Disturbia Mascara? So I've tried this before. I actually really like this. It's one of those really hard plastic wands, like it's not very fluffy, but I do notice it can clump. So I just wanna use this on camera, and then I am gonna put falsies on. But I mean, look at that. Wow. I actually do like this, but I just think it can get messy. It feels like a really wet formula. Holy shit, are we seeing that? Wow. This is like, kind of weird that I can even see my lashes especially even though I do have really like small liner on usually I can't see them at all have any of you tried this I'm kind of in shock right now it's better than I remembered so for lashes I'm taking Amy June lashes and these are in Avery but I'm actually cutting them because I don't have a ton of liner on I want this to almost flare out just at the outer corner of my eyes. Okay, so I applied my lashes. I have to say, doing this makeup is a lot harder. Just trying to cover the lash band. This inner corner, I completely jack this up. We're just gonna roll with it. Uh, usually, this is what sucks about like trying new makeup a lot of the time, is if I hate it and I feel like I messed up and I can't fix it, I feel like I failed, but I'm human and I'm just doing the best I can. So I'm actually gonna go back in to mix uh, this shade and this shade for my lower lash line. And I'm just going to apply this just to give a little bit of color on the lower lash line. When I was watching Tina's video, she said these are much harder looks to do, and I agree. Like the soft glam, instead of just doing like a wing that covers my lash band and my lash glue and all that, I just find this so hard to do. It's like really precise work. I'm gonna take a tiny bit of the shade Nutty, and I'm just gonna apply this closer to the lash line, just a little bit, just to give me a little bit more definition. So moving on to face, so we can tie this whole look together, I'm gonna go in with my Viseart Contour Palette. It's not my favorite, but I do use the middle shade, and I've been enjoying contouring since I got the Chickahoto Contour Brush. Game changer. Truly a game changer. If you want like that sharp contour, this is like the softest brush ever and it's really small, but I just kind of place the product and then I kind of sweep up. So when you first apply it, it's like a stripe and then you just kind of sweep it up. 
So for bronzer, I'm going to go in with ColourPop Coconut. This is Talk to the Palm, which is the cooler shade. And I'm using a Chikahoto T2, which I adore. So these are really soft, powdery bronzers. I like the formula. They're just a little bit powdery. So just keep that in mind. You really need to like tap in one time and you're good to go. So for blush, I do want a little bit of a pop. I'm going to go in with the new Patrick Ta She's Passionate. Is that what it's called? This is like the pink shade. And I just like this one best because it gives me that baby doll look, which is kind of like my vibe. I did get the dark one, but for this look, since everything's kind of just neutral, I want to use this to brighten up the face. So as you can see, you can build this up, but this is a very sheer blush. So if you're a beginner, I think this would be a nice one for you because you really can't go overboard. I mean, I just applied like three layers to get where I'm at. So it's pretty, it's just very soft. So for highlighter, I want to use the new Glazed Lit Kit from Laura Lee Los Angeles. Uh, she sent this over to me and it looks really pretty. These are really, really, I mean, wow blinding so I thought we could try this out I have a lot of new highlighters but this one spoke to me and I've been hearing it's really nice so I'm just gonna use a real technique setting brush and I'm gonna go into that shade diamonds so it's actually softer than I thought which is nice because I can build it up I'm gonna spray this with some Tarte spray and see if that kind of amplifies things yeah these can definitely be built up to be blinding or you can kind of buff them in to be a little bit more of that natural look so for lips I want to line with Sorme Cosmetics number no. seven this is just one of my favorite lip liners for like nude looks So for lipstick, I'm going to go in with Laura Lee Los Angeles Liquid Lipstick in Cabana. I love her formula. She came out with some, I think, last year. And so she just came out with three new ones. And this is like a super nude shade. Her formula is really nice. It's very thin, but pigmented and then to finish off I want to go in with this lawless lip glaze I think that's what they're called I bought this from the Sephora sale and this is in the shade Annie which is like a light pink so I'm gonna apply it it's pretty um, pigmented and kind of thick but I like that All right, guys, here's my finished makeup look, and I don't know. I'm kind of iffy on this technique on me. I feel like it looked beautiful on her, but I'm kind of like, mm, I don't know if it's for me. So let me know what you think down below, just the different eyeshadow technique. Uh, also, I will tag Tina down below if you want to check out her channel. She's, like, really talented. So I'm going to go over the products. First, starting off with the Fourth Ray Soak It Up mask. I actually like this under makeup. I feel like it was nice and hydrating. To me, this feels so similar to the Tatcha Dewy Skin Cream, probably the closest dupe that I found. I think just the color, but also the texture. It's a little bit thinner, but it has that like almost like dimethicone slip to it. So I really like this. It's supposed to be, you know, something you can apply to clean skin, leave on for five to 10 minutes, or you can use it as a moisturizer. So I think this is a nice product um, just for dual purpose, kind of like the Summer Fridays Jet Lag Mask. Obviously this is more affordable. I'll keep using it, but it did a nice job hydrating under my makeup. Moving on to the Foundation X. I won't be able to tell until I wear it all day. I do think it looks nice. I don't necessarily think it's smoothing, but it's also not accentuating. It's just kind of right in the middle. So I'll have to play around with this. I'm really finicky with foundations, but my first impression is that it has a high coverage. It's a thin formula. It didn't oxidize or do anything crazy. So I have high hopes for it, but I just don't know if it's like the most smoothing for someone with uh, kind of skin issues like I have. Moving on to the Pretty Fresh ColourPop Concealer. 
I like it, but I'm not blown away. Looking at my under eyes, though, they look really good right now. I feel like more is more, as I said with this. Typically, less is more for concealer, but I feel like for this one, you really want to kind of coat it underneath and blend it out with a sponge to get that hydration. I just don't think it's super hydrating, and that's what I was kind of anticipating. So I like it, but I'm not blown away by it. In terms of the Going Coconuts palette, I absolutely love this. I just feel like it's truly neutral, whereas a lot of times when you hear people say neutral palette, it's it's really warm orange yellow maroon it's neutral tones this is actually neutral there is not warmth in here I would say the warmest shade would be this one and it's still got that neutral undertone so I think this is a beautiful palette the price is right there's no glitters in here if you don't like glitters uh, there's three shimmers and then a sparkly shade five mattes I think this is just super practical for really neutral glam looks if you love just neutral shadows for every day I think this is a great buy in terms of the bronzer I do like it I prefer the shade talk to the palm which is the one that I use today a little bit more cool toned it is really powdery and I noticed that my other one was even more so so this is my favorite one I like that it's matte a lot of times we're seeing kind of like dewy or not dewy sparkly or shimmery bronzers and I feel like that can accentuate texture so I do like this uh, it is quite powdery though so just keep in mind it's very pigmented a little goes a long way so talking about this Givenchy mascara I mean the proof is in the pudding if you saw me apply that I could not believe just the lashes that it gave me typically I cannot see my lashes like even with no liner so the fact that I could see my lashes with liner that is crazy I had a sample of this a while ago and I really loved it and then they sent this over to me so I think this is a wet formula it can get clumpy because it's really gonna coat your lashes and give them that lift but I really really like this also really kind of liking this uh, blush from Patrick Ta and she's passionate I it's growing on me at first I thought oh my gosh it's not very pigmented you know it just kind of took a lot to build up I'm I'm used to kind of like a melt blush or a MAC blush that just kind of goes on in one swipe. This is definitely a buildable blush. This is my favorite shade. She's passionate for me. Of course, I love the pinks and the corals, and I do feel like it's very natural and gives you that lit from within. So this is growing on me because at first I thought, mm, I don't know if it's pigmented enough, but I feel like once you build it up, it does have that beautiful flush. Moving on to the lit kit from Laura Lee Los Angeles. There is a ton of highlight in here. I mean, seriously, there's four massive pans in here. This is the lighter palette. She does also have a deeper skin tone palette. So I think these are really nice because when I first applied it, it was almost like that ethereal kind of lit from within and then if I really wanted to amp it up which I did I got my brush wet and then I really kind of concentrated it right here so you do get four shades in here I probably would use these shades the most but I think it's crazy bang for your buck been hearing great things about this so I'm excited to play with it some more and then finishing with the lips I already know that I love her liquid lipstick formula it has like I want to say she said it was like a Jolly Rancher smell. It's just like a nice light smell. It doesn't get in your mouth or have a weird taste. And I like the shades in here. It's a thin formula, but it's not whipped and it's not super watery. It's kind of in between and it wears well. So I know I like these. She came out with like a peach, a hot red, and then this nude. And then the Lawless Lip Gloss are super pigmented. They're almost like the ABH glosses. So if you don't like that, then you won't like these. These have a fruity kind of scent. They're not super glossy like when you apply them. They're more of like a, I would say like a satin liquid lipstick. I mean, there's definitely some, you know, shine there, but they're more so like a full pigment, which I actually enjoy because that's just kind of my vibe. But if you like like a sheer shiny gloss, this is not for you. It is a little bit sticky or not sticky, but thick as well. Kind of reminds me of the Patrick Ta new lip creams, but a little bit more glossy. So I actually like these. I have three shades, and I would use these to manipulate lip colors if I feel like they're too dark or something like that. All right, guys, so that is it for this trying new makeup. I just wanted to do kind of a neutral glam look, but try a different technique. So let me know your thoughts down below. Overall, I feel like it was pretty successful, and I'm going to keep playing around with these products. Let me know what makeup you want me to try next. Uh, more of these videos are coming. Thank you guys again. I'll see you in the next one.